We're talking about Cashbase Mobile uh, over here at All, All Things Open. Yesterday, uh, there was another Cashbase talk that was uh, more on a NoSQL and server side. Don't know if anyone attended that. Did anyone attend that? Just curious. One, just one, right? Perfect. So there's not really a huge overlap just because the topics are different. Uh, my name is William. I am a mobile engineer, mobile developer advocate at Couchbase. Uh, company is based in Mountain View. I'm actually based in New York. Uh, my background is I'm an electrical engineer. Uh, did some time at McGill University in Canada. Uh, worked at BlackBerry, worked at Microsoft for, uh, well, BlackBerry only makes one product, so mobile. And Microsoft, I was on the Windows Phone team uh, for uh, their SDK up to 7.1. Recently, I was at Twitter uh, as an Android SDK engineer, and now I'm at Couchbase, uh, so also doing mobile. So throughout my career, it's been mobile. Uh, I want to talk about what NoSQL is really quickly. Um, for mobile developers, this is a newer topic, so just curious, show of hands, what's anything, anyone new to NoSQL? Or? This is fairly new to me even, so I started on Mongo a couple years ago, um, and since then, never really looked back. But I want to talk about this and why it's important for mobile. Basically, if you look at the current state right now, um, there's a lot of interconnected devices. Uh, you got three billion people around the world uh, that's hyper-connected. Uh, they're going through um, uh, mobile devices as their da data generation from that point. And if you look at the trend, there's a lot of unstructured data uh, that's essentially being captured. Um, and that's essentially growing uh, uncontinuously. So if you think about semi-structured data, unstructured data, one explicit intent or check-in, let's say you do that on Facebook, gets you like 10 data points. Um, and what's really driving that, if you look at it, uh, the adoption of NoSQL is really driven by f uh, three major, uh, major trends in the industry. Uh, lots of data. Uh, IoT, Internet of Things, and cloud computing. So these three things, if you look at it, it's really disrupting the traditional data storage stories, RDBMS, uh, for those who are familiar with backend uh, storage. And what's the new requirement for the current state is you need responsive apps, responsive user experiences. You need uh, applications that scale. Uh, they need to be agile to develop and change, uh, mobile first. Uh, your users are not just one demographic or one geographic. They're all distributed around the world. So your application needs to function 24-7 uh, um, all the time. And they need to support those concurrent use cases. Uh, and easy to manage, right? Um, your data min, your system min, uh, do you have to basically adjust accordingly to uh, where the user demands, to the features, and all that. Um, so easy to manage or easy to iterate doesn't really fall through. Uh, when you look at something like this. So if you're familiar with you know, uh, UML diagramming or uh, creating users and their properties, this is a trivial case where you can actually take a pivot point and traverse this and hopefully slowly you get something out of it. But what, what NoSQL is is essentially uh, trying, to, trying to flatten that down all together. So what you're talking about, um, if you look at the previous slide, um, referencing that, taking two of those tables and equivalenting it to just a flat JSON file, uh, just keys and values. So you're abstracting um, your SQL statements, um, your joins in that regard, down to uh, what your use case is and how you can abstract that in a data uh, modeling uh, scheme. So I can reference that more in, uh, in detail uh, in, in, uh, in the future slides that's coming up. But it's essentially where if you look at what was before traditionally, you have to look at what those pivot points are. Essentially, it's now just flattening it down and just pulling out the values that you need. Um, and you can have nested values all together. So if you look at it from that perspective, a document database can store basically an entire object uh, in a single JSON document. So from mobile's perspective or IoT's perspective or unstructured data's perspective, all that is super fast, super quick. Um, who is Couchbase? Uh, pretty much a leader in performance and scalability. Uh, from a mobile developer standpoint, when I came and joined Couchbase, um, it was definitely new. Uh, database is not something mobile engineers and developers think always on their heads. Um, but it's essentially a crucial piece. I want to talk about um, how that came about. 
Uh, at a glance, Couchbase is 4x growth in 2013. It's one of the leading uh, growth companies in the NoSQL space. Uh, we're focused on enterprise as well as grassroots developers. So myself, I'm a mobile engineer developer, so I focus on uh, the adoption for uh, grassroots developers as well as uh, bring the awareness and use cases across all the different uh, developer personas. So it's definitely uh, in the wild. Uh, it's GA across uh, companies like Disney, um, eBay, PayPal, Viber. Viber switched from Mongo to, to Couchbase. Um, and it's really cool. Uh, it's based on the Apache 2 license model. So uh, essentially, our uh, sole revenue stream is support. Um, the, uh, I would say the infancy of uh, Couchbase, so it, it came from CouchDB. Uh, so CouchDB uh, was forked from there. It's now sends two separate open source projects. Uh, Cloud is another uh, solution that got uh, forked from CouchDB. Uh, IBM, that's an IBM solution. And there's a bunch of others. Um, I'm not going to go into detail what, of what NoSQL is. There's four major ones, uh, column-based, value-based, document-based, graph-based. Uh, for us, Couchbase is a document-orientated database. And um, there's probably there's a couple more. It's four, those are the four major ones. There's more than just four. Uh, but Couchbase Mobile um, is essentially an embedded uh, JSON database that's living on your device, desktop, mobile devices. But even before that, what's, what's the use case or business problem? I want to describe what this is. Because there's a lot of great tech out there. Um, but there's always a need to solve a problem. So the technology that we want to introduce needs to solve a current use case and current problem. I want to explore that a bit. So if you look at today's uh, application, traditionally, you probably work with a product designer, uh, someone that wireframes, and you're designing for the best use case, right? You, uh, you probably go into the, the room, you probably do your due diligence, looking at all the applications across the, the industry in, in your vertical looking at what those cool user experiences are, and you just wireframe it first, probably. Or you list out a bunch of features, and you try to squeeze it all into one frame or a couple frames. Um, so basically, what I'm trying to say here is that those are perfect if you have a network connection. Uh, essentially, we are all relying on content. Uh, without any content, the mobile application simply is, uh, at most, uh, just a shell. But that content is heavily reliant on network network connectivity. Um, if you ever go to New York City or baseball stadiums, football stadiums, um, air, airplanes, for example, you probably experience something like this. Uh, network congestion could be one reason. Another reason could just be simply your server might be down, right? The content that you're trying to fetch for can't be retrieved. Um, essentially, from a mobile app perspective, uh, developer side, we're always focused on creating, uh, you know, how to how to cache your resources? What's the best way to kind of put in that UI view, et cetera? But content-wise, we're all really just doing a GET request. We're doing an HTTP GET request uh, or POST request back uh, up to a server. And at most, you might experience some latency like this. But the worst experience would be something like this, right? Uh, please try again. The app doesn't work, and it's really frustrating just because. Um, the users are not in control for something of this sort, right? All they can do is sit there and wait. You can't, uh, you can't basically uh, store anything that the user uh, has done. Let's say, um, let's say they uh, wrote a comment in a comment box. If they took a picture, they can't even cache that or store that. Essentially, they're relying on this experience of having that internet connection. So. The unfortunately, the unfortunate part and the reality of things is that users are not typically engineers or have the patience. What they do is they go to the app store and they completely rip you apart. Uh, they give you a bad rating. Uh, they talk about how the applications are uh, unfortunately not functioning when it actually does work, but it's actually dependent on a network connection. Um, but essentially, from experience, if this happens, you might as well take it down and rebrand it altogether. Um, it just hurts discoverability. But if you look at a graph of what this problem is, uh, those three major areas of contribution, why something of this sort um, is, um, why people complain about your application. If you look at it from the App Store's perspective, 
is related to uh, app freezing, app crashing, and slow responsiveness. So all of these things are something as a designer, app designer, um, engineer, you can kind of attribute for. These are all common things that's related to the app basically not dealing with uh, a connection or uh, not having a connection. If you look at the problem of this space, it's actually very simple. It's the data location. That's where the problem is, right? The location is somewhere else in a third-party server. Uh, you have no control of it. You don't, probably don't even have a local copy of it, and you're just needing to do that fetch for it. Um, it's unfortunate because, let's say, the person sitting next to you even has that particular file. You can't even just you know, USB transfer it back in the days or just poke the person, transfer. You have to go up the wire and back down again. So the location is a problem, but the solution is really a hybrid solution. The solution is really where you think about why can't you do all your CRUD operations, your create, your retrieve, your update, your deletes. Do that all locally on your device. And then when you have a connection or when you do want to sync, not always immediately, sync that up accordingly. So it's really a hybrid solution where um, do everything local because that's the fastest writes and the fastest reads. And accordingly, when you have that uh, opportunity, go up the wire, sync it up accordingly. And what that really translates to is no uh, hang weight indicator. But from a user's perspective, what they feel is, hey, your app works really fast, right? I've seen people on an airplane, they've actually opened Instagram and tried to click on things, right? Their, um, um, their mindset is not based on network connection. There's like, oh, I have a bar. A bar means I'm connected. It's not like that. Uh, your apps supposedly work really, really fast. Let's say a 20, 35 megabyte, let's say, HD picture. If you, they press send, everything goes through. Well, from their perspective, it's, as, it's actually just written to a local database. It's fast from a user's perspective. Um, less code. I think that's a technical engineering debt that everyone appreciates. Essentially, all that uh, replication code is offset to a library called Couchbase Lite. And people love your apps. Your ratings will definitely be, be better than two-star rating. So this is some of the uh, high-level issues I think we immediately resolve. The, the problem with uh, not having connection, the problem with not having connection and not having connection means not having experience. People always talk about offline is an afterthought because you talk about, well, you have a certain time to develop an application, develop the features for it, develop the experience for it. Offline is not really part of that conversation, but the way I see it is actually very different. The way I see it is offline is a feature. It's a feature that enables everything else to happen because let's say you talk about, oh, I want a map uh, feature inside my app. Well, if you don't have offline support, then technically GPS is always on, but your pictures, your map, it doesn't render because you're fetching it, trying to get that picture. Well, offline is that feature that enables everything else to happen. So the way I honestly uh, look at it from a global perspective is if you just have that piece, everything else just comes much more easier. Um, what is Couchbase Mobile? Understanding the problem, how do we attempt to solve it? This is the solution. Um, it comes with two parts. Uh, Couchbase Mobile is actually three parts if you think about it. There's a server piece that lives in the cloud. Um, that's not somewhat related to mobile, um, the mobile focus. That's something where once the, the local stuff is done, you basically push it up to a Couchbase server, which was yesterday's talk. Um, Couchbase Mobile, like I mentioned, you have the Couchbase Lite part, which is simply a library framework that lives inside your project. Uh, the sync gateway piece is what sits between your uh, client, your uh, uh, mobile device, and between that and the Couchbase server, uh, you have the data piece, data orchestration piece called sync gateway. Um, these two make up the focus for, for, uh, for mobile developers and mobile engineers. Um, it runs in process, talk about some of the features really quickly. Run some process, uh, we're talking about NoSQL mobile database, so it's just a JSON, um, JSON um, flat file. About 500 kilobytes for iOS, about 600 kilobytes for, uh, for Android. And talking about some of the features before I go on to a small demo. It's a document, documented oriented database, so that's why I mentioned that uh, early on about NoSQL. Um, it provides you with MapReduce uh, for querying and provides you with event notification outright. So essentially you're writing UI UX code here 
And one of the coolest parts, when uh, the feature I think is the crown jewel of it all, is sync, uh, or engineering terms is master-master replication. There's no concept of uh, primary, secondary, or slave, or master. You eventually have consistency across all your client devices. So I'll show that also in the demo. Um, the document oriented database part, we're talking about keys and values uh, that incorporates uh, versioning. So for us, and any time you do a CRUD operation, we keep a revision history of that. Um, it's schemaless, so um, hence we talked about JSON and, and uh, keys and values. And because of that, you can code fast, right? If things change, a particular property changes on a particular user, introduce something, take something out, it's really easy. So for example, like over here, uh, I don't have to think, oh, which table does it belong with? Oh, if it belongs in that table, do I have to make that pivot and then that join? Uh, essentially, yeah, if I have a particular room now in this, uh, it's wrong X actually, it's actually 306A, right? I can just go in and change that. I can introduce another property. I can have nested property. Um, I'm, living, I'm living in New York, I'm previously living in Montreal, but I actually lived in Seattle too, so I can just go in there and put another location. So you can have nested, um, nested values as well. And this, this entire thing is your object, right? So I can basically query for type. If type is session underscore zero one, I can retrieve my entire object there, all that uh, session property. If it's not, try to find out uh, what, it, what am I looking for or just pass on. It's, instead of doing all the uh, operations, like the SQL operation. So it's really fast. Um, how you, we do our queries, uh, we can talk about this in detail, but basically you're basically, uh, excuse me, basically you're building your index using a MapReduce. Um, and from then, if your index will change accordingly, you can rebuild it again. Um, but results are basically persistent for fast querying now. Once you build it, it's really fast for you to retrieve anything you're, you're looking for. And um, it's also cool because you don't have to go to another application. It's only setting breakpoints in your IDE. Uh, change notifications, this is really neat. Uh, you can basically listen and observe for changes in, in multiple areas in your database level, in your query level. Uh, you can do it even down, in, down to your document level. And it cuts down uh, a lot of code. Cuts down a lot of cruft code because essentially what you're doing is you're, you're listening for these callbacks uh, and essentially if something changes accordingly, you can render it on your UI thread and uh, you don't have to always be pulling. Uh, of course you can, there is that option, but this is something where you can also save a lot of resource. And sync, the crown jewel of it all. When we talk about sync, we talk about master-master replication. Uh, this also deals with conflict, so you can also do continuous syncing or ad hoc sync. Ad hoc sync means uh, you can attach this to a particular intent. So let's say on app, on app exit, you can push all your data that's local to your device to the cloud. On app start, you can do a pull of it. Um, or for example, if there's a change accordingly, uh, you can particular pick an instance of it or a time uh, to do all that syncing. Or you can do it like, like a chat application that's continuously uh, listening and open. Where is this available? Um, it even works on Blackberry. <laughs> so uh, CocoaPods if you're an iOS developer, Maven Central if you're doing Android, NuGet if you're doing uh, .NET. Uh, we support four .NET runtime. That's Mono, Xamarin, uh, Microsoft.NET. Um, can't remember the next one. I'll, 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 it'll remember, it'll pop in. Uh, and of course, we're at all things open, so if you really want to build from source, the complete stack is on GitHub. Uh, we actually have community pull requests that comes in, and we, re we uh, review that as well. Oh, the fourth one is, uh, is Unity. So um, yeah, it's, it's across the stack. Uh, there's also this particular feature. Um, PouchDB, so if you're not familiar, it's an open source JavaScript uh, database that's inspired by Pouchy, uh, CouchDB. Uh, that's designed basically run within the browser. Uh, they basically fork the sync gateway piece that does the syncing. So essentially, PouchDB is our uh, somewhat uh, of a JavaScript solution that would sync up uh, according to a uh, couch base uh, uh, platform. On the Couchbase uh, server side, um, there's pretty much all the different flavors you can think of or choose from. Um, so this is outside mobile. Of course, I put, put some mobile in there. Uh, you have different frameworks, all the different language supports on the server side. 
um, different platforms um, and inf infrastructures. Um, based on that, you can basically run a lot of the, the cool analytics, right? And you've probably seen some of the talks here. So even though mobile, you front end to end it with a mobile solution that does offline databases, on the back end, uh, it's, no, um, it's, no, um, it's no joke also. It's, uh, it's a technology that's been proven and used by industry leaders like Apple, eBay, PayPal, um, that's basically supporting all the concurrent users in a NoSQL setting. I uh, want to talk about Sync Gateway as well here. What is Sync Gateway? It's the piece that does your uh, authentication or authorization. Uh, basically, it determines who gets what data, uh, when do they get it. Um, it's essentially a JavaScript function you write. At the heart of Sync Gateway, it's really just a JavaScript function in the end. Uh, what this looks like in, in the entire stack, let's bring it into, uh, into, into some closure here. Uh, you got your left-hand side there, which is your project, your application that has Couchbase Lite. You bring that into your uh, Xcode or IDE. Uh, it's a framework you reference. Um, and then you have, uh, on the right-hand side, you have Couchbase Server. So in the demo, I'm going to show the Couchbase server is just local to my device. It's local hosted. But we don't do the hosting, so you can put it on any uh, host that you would like. So I have one personally on DigitalOcean. I have another on AWS. But essentially, the middle piece I was talking about does the syncing uh, accordingly. Um, you basically uh, write, um, in, in your IDE, you basically point a particular um, object that you want to sync to, to an endpoint, a URL endpoint that's on your server side, and it would do all that syncing for you. So uh, that's all taken care of. This is the, this is the Couchbase mobile stack. Um, the focus, of course, is Couchbase Lite and Sync Gateway. Um, how you do some of the reads, um, we have a feature called channels. So essentially, you would basically group users or group categories and give access uh, to those particular categories. Think of it like a freeway. One lane is for something. The other lane is for something else. So this is how you can do some of the data orchestration pieces uh, as well. Um, something I won't be showing today, but it, it's a feature within the Couchbase Lite library uh, framework is that we support peer-to-peer. -peer. So we're traditionally familiar with having the architecture on the left-hand side there, where you have essentially a parent, and you have nodes or a child, and you have to go up the, up the chain, up to the parent node, and down the wire again, peer-to-peer -peer essentially. Uh, with Couchbase Lite, there is a simple HTTP server uh, embedded in the framework. So uh, essentially, you can leverage the same network, and you can transfer data accordingly without just abstracting out the server altogether. Of course, if you want to then, after a transfer, for example, you're on an airplane, you want to do a transfer with the person next to you, that's something like peer-to-peer -peer that you can leverage. And then when you're off the plane, both of you or one of you can sync up to so, so, the source of truth, so to say. So um, what that means, peer-to-peer, -peer, we can basically create some really cool mesh networks. <clears throat> so we're familiar with the star network. When one node goes down, typically, uh, you have failure. Um, the ring network, of course, um, it's a bit better, but at the same time, there is that uh, opportunity for failure or no experience. And peer-to-peer -peer is dealing with a fully connected network. So if you think of it like in a baseball stadium, if somebody next to you <clears throat> has the content that you're looking for as well, you don't have to go up the wire to do a get, or the server doesn't need to be broadcasting and push this down. If somebody next to you has it, they can basically populate everyone around you. So this is what a mesh network and peer-to-peer -peer, uh, opportunity uh, enables with the, the, the trends of mobile and IoT in that experience. Um, Couchbase Mobile, there's a lot of apps that's out there that's using it right now. I can, I can go on uh, with more than just this page, but I want to maybe show you um, what Ryanair did with Couchbase Mobile. I'll talk against this. <clears throat> this is a local video, so it shouldn't be should load fast. I see the spinner on my screen. <clears throat> All right, so I'll talk against this. Hope everyone can see. So on the left hand side, you have Ryanair, which is a travel application that uh, pretty much didn't have any local database involved. Uh, on the right-hand side, they've retrofitted it with Couchbase Lite. So in, I think, two months' time to three months' time frame, they basically made an app update. And you can see how um, the bottom line there is this transition piece um, on how 
based on uh, time series, where they are in their application process or progress. Uh, so Ryanair basically have Couchbase Lite here. This is not even going up the wire to sync. And you can see how slow the left-hand side is and how quick on the right-hand side uh, with basic like image uh, already cached and already data points persisted locally. They can just pull that up. Um, accordingly versus on the left hand side they're basically going up the wire to basically get all the data information like for example you see uh, the plane status right like the prices the location and at the same time um, on the right hand side at the same time uh, they're already entering I think uh, trying to order the, the plane ticket trying to put in user information so uh, what's really neat is also you can see immediate user feedback I think in their app store um, People were talking, were saying, "Wow, your app really improved. Like it's, it, it's not like that before." Uh, and this is actually very simple for them. They just retrofit it with a local database, um, and you can see the, the the poor experience they had before. And if let's say their app crashes or they exit the application, none of that data point is persisted. They have to start over again. Versus on the right hand side, uh, let's say what you search for, your seat selection, the images off those seats, those are all locally persisted. So you just have to read it off your, your device. Um, for them, that's what they do. Of course, as an app developer, you decide what you want to store or, or save uh, locally. Um, so that's Ryanair. Um, Couchways Mobile. And NoSQL, really, what's the, what's the big picture? What's the opportunity? It's essentially, if you look at where NoSQL is, for not even just Couchbase, but uh, across the industry, uh, this is being adopted only because it is uh, the trend. It is basically going to provide value in terms of speed, um, in terms of uh, user experience. And of course, mobile is a huge driver of that because content's being generated uh, from mobile, right? So in summary, why open source? You get more choices, more flexibility, uh, developing it faster. Uh, it's great when I see uh, the community contributing back to the project uh, with PR uh, pull requests and also helping us with bug fixes. Uh, why NoSQL, like I mentioned? It's f definitely flexible in, in your data model sense. Uh, if you think about structured data and unstructured data, scaling out that architecture, especially from a mobile setting when things change so fast and those features are always rolling, and you can just have that opportunity to go in and change uh, and, and modify that accordingly. Uh, why Couchbase? Well, performance, availability, scalability, ease of use, these are uh, some of the things that we uh, really uh, believe on and actually we iterate on heavily, uh, mobile and server. So those are some of the reasons in summary. Some of the next steps here, uh, you could definitely uh, take down some information. So documentation, I recommend looking. The uh, mini hack is something I contribute. It's actually a GitHub project. Uh, you get basically in 30 minutes to 45 minutes, really good deep dive on how to integrate all of this stuff on your own. So it's kind of like a tutorial. And uh, the, the developer forums is another piece uh, that I live heavily on. I'm going to put all of this stuff in a tweet afterwards, including the slides. So I'll do that from my, um, my Twitter. If you want to follow, I can definitely post that um, probably end of day. And um, yeah, open for questions. And I'm going to show a quick demo as well. So um, yeah, my name is Will if you want to take that down. I don't know how much time I have. I think I have a bit of time to show a quick demo. So what happens, what's, what's happening here is that I got a Couchbase server uh, spinned up locally. And I have an Android application, two Android applications. And what I'm trying to show here is some sync. And don't forget, all of this is dependent on how good Wi-Fi is, right? This one's not coming up. Let's try one more time. Seems I can't press. Okay. This emulator is uh, crapping up at my. Let's try spinning up another one. <clears throat> So 
So this is the left hand one is a stock emulator. This one I'm using Genie Motion, uh, which is a paid emulator, a lot faster. All right, cool. So let's see if this is working. If I untoggle this, this is locally persisted. You see it's sync on the other side. All that syncing code is done by Couchbase Mobile across the stack. Uh, if I delete, I'm not, I don't want to delete all things open. I'm, I'm still here. Uh, if I delete this one, this have, you have that eventual consistency piece. So another thing that's neat is what, what about conflicts, right? So that's one of the, one of the key features Couchbase Mobile supports. So on airplane, if I go on airplane mode, no data, and I go and, and, I go and change this, uh, update this to all things open 2015. But don't forget, this one's offline, right? So this one's just locally persisted. Um, for example, if you kill this off, open it again, you see it just reads. Um, so it's local to this device, but it's not synced because you're still in the airplane. But this person is connected. So, so let's say I do 14. So this particular image or instance is local, persisted, and it's synced up to the cloud to be 20, uh, 2014 or 14. But what happens when I step off the airplane, right? So this is, this is where conflict would occur because uh, they were both uh, having all things open referencing that particular node. And now you have um, 2015 referencing that node and then you have uh, all things open 2014. So this one I have it on, uh, I also have the replication on um, ad hoc, so let me try to force this. You see something popped up, something popped up here. It's not 2015, it's, it's 14. It's essentially, a lot of the solutions out there is based on the premise of last right wins. Uh, for us, we actually keep the entire revision tree, so if there is a conflict, there's a, basically a Boolean call that you can reference that returns true or false, and a conflict here occurs, so it's true, and you can do something with it. Over here, I'm just doing a render, but because the tree is intact, I can click resolve conflict. I can see, hey, uh, it, there's all things open 2014, there's actually all things open 2015. We pick a default winner, in this case, but you as an app developer, you can decide, well, I want to merge actually both of them together, or I want to just pick the winner, uh, have the user pick the winner. So if I pick all things 2015, you can see the conflict disappears, and this is the, the, the latest and greatest. So that's Couchbase Mobile um, in a nutshell, and I've got some time, I think, for, for some questions. So let me pop this up again. That's my talk. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Hey. What do you? The question is, what do you run on the server side? Uh, you run Couchbase server, and there's different flavors of it. You no, know, depending on what your platform or language preference is, uh, so you can put that any on, on any box you like to put it on. Um, on Amazon, there's actually a micro instance. You can press a couple of buttons. It's, it's basically an image. You can spin that up. And from that image, it gives you a URL. And you point your mobile application to that URL. And in your function, you decide, let's say I press a button. Now I want to sync. You basically you reference that URL endpoint to sync it up to whatever box that you're putting it on. But you're running a Couchbase server. Um, a lot of people have probably a SQL server or uh, Oracle database. A lot of how you would do that is you're front-loaded with a Couchbase server piece. Uh, the stack can't be broken in that regard. So you still get that sync piece using the Couchbase server, the, the sync gateway, and what's in your embedded device. But your, maybe your source of truth is in your RDBMS server, and that would be simply like a cache. And then you basically write mappers to it and then pull and push from. Uh, using REST APIs accordingly. So that's the kind of the stack architecture. Questions, comments, feedback, love, tweets? Oh, I'm, I'm going to be around, so um, yeah, happy to answer any questions. Cool. Thank you. Ah.